Hey guys, so today we're going to talk a little bit about styled components and style sheets. So let's get into it. Now this was actually a subscriber question where it's, uh, I think it's a very good question and there's no really like easy answer to this, but I'll share my thoughts on it and we'll just see what, what you think about it. So let's first and foremost define some things. So a styled component is a term that many will associate with the sort of workflow we see, especially in React these days, where you have a component in React that simply holds a piece of styling. And then you apply that component and that does your styling for you, basically. Another take on this is that you have something like CSS modules, so you use inline styles, that sort of thing. These things are all very closely associated, but the fundamental idea behind this is that you have components that you use in order to create your interfaces or to do your styling for you. So as an example, you could have a very popular one is grid, where you have a row component and then you have a column component and so forth and so forth. Now, the other spectrum is, all right, you have style sheets, like the way that the web for the most part works, where you have your files with your different CSS styles and so forth. And just, you know, you apply class names and selectors and IDs and like all the things, right? Now, working with this for, I've, I have been working with these, both these technologies for quite some time now. And there are pros and cons to both. So I'll just take, give you kind of how I think about them. And then we'll talk a little bit about what I actually think when it comes to usages. So one of the first things I think that we need to say about style sheets is that CSS is notoriously hard to maintain over a long period of time. And some people actually, I will go as, I will actually go as far as to say that it is so complicated that it actually requires you to, I'm not saying be a master, but it requires a lot of skill for you to be able to maintain and write CSS over time and to, to start off with actually write CSS that is going to create responsive designs and do all the things that you want because it's, it's actually very tricky. I will even go as far as to say that CSS is so hard to get right. It's very easy to get started, but it's very hard to master. It's actually so hard that most people don't actually know how to write scalable CSS. Writing really simple CSS or like at small scale is very, very easy, but it's very, very hard to scale it to large, like to a large size. And since it's so, f so hard and it's actually so few people who get really good at it, this is actually one of the common reasons why frameworks such as Bootstrap, for example, get used because these are off-the-shelf solutions that will help you structure certain aspects of CSS and web, like web design, if you will, without you having to know all that much. And that's the usage of most frameworks. That's usually how it goes. It's you have a framework and you have either a requirement for speed or you simply don't have the programmers or like the developers that are needed in order to do this from scratch, like from the bare bone basics. That's, so, so that's usually how, you, how kind of things go. Like that's, that's the risk you, you kind of run with CSS. Now, the way that I do this is that I usually have a compiler of some sort that compiles my style sheets to one single giant file. Uh, in order to scale this in an efficient manner, I use two tips. I, I can give you two tricks. BEM, or Block Element Modifier, is a CSS style of, or it's a style, uh, an architecture for CSS that I have used now for a few years. It works absolutely flawlessly. It's never failed me, not even once. And it grows to any size. I used to, I've used this uh, to really, really large projects as well. And it's complete. I've never, ever seen it fail. And the other tip I can give you is that uh, 
you well, what I like to do is that I have a single main file that is simply responsible for importing all of my component style sheets because it gets really messy if you just have one big super file. So I use some, usually I use either SAS or PostSS. PostSS is probably my preferred choice. But basically the idea then is that you create your component, you take your style sheet and you put your style sheet together with your component and then you have that single entry point file, just as you would with any other JavaScript file or any other, like every single program guys has an entry point. This is your entry point into your CSS. And all it is is just one long file of imports of other files and that way it actually becomes very easy for you to modularize everything that is associated with a given component and it becomes very easy to keep it clean. So that's the way that I use style sheets. Now, when we talk about style components, usually the, the idea here is like, how do you, rather the, the, the issue I have with style components is like, the, it's, uh, it's can, it can be hard to know how to make a good style component. I mean, should you have a, a styled component for, I mean, how granular do you want to go? I mean, it makes a lot of sense to have a row and a column, for example, for grid layouts, but should you go even further? Should you have a component for color? Should you have a component for alignment? You know, all these different things, right? And when you're using styled components, I would say that the thing you should consider whether or not to use them is one fundamental thing. And that is, do you need that level of specificity? Because it used to be a while, quite a long time back where, where people used, say, tables to do form layouts. Now, since then, we progressed from that. And I think that using style components is a very similar thing. Unless you have a really good use case for using a style component, and a good use case is, as I said, if you have mostly people who are not, they don't, I mean, they're not CSS masters, then maybe using style components is the way to go. Or maybe using Bootstrap. I mean, the, the, it's a way off that you have to make. But if you are aiming to make really scalable, sustainable, performant websites, and you really know your stuff with CSS. I, I personally think that you should keep your, stay with actually using style sheets because the benefits to that out, so, so vastly outweighs the benefits to style components. That's at least how I feel about it. Because when you're adding style components, you're adding actually more than just styling. The actual thing that you're doing is that you are adding markup to begin with, to actually do styling. And that's, as I said, it's the same thing as doing table layouts. You're using markup to do styling, and that's the whole point of having style sheets to begin with. Which means that, all right, you now have to think about added page weight, you have to think about, you know, you can't benefit from caching strategies, stuff, stuff of that nature, because it's in your markup, right? Or when you're using React, it's in JavaScript. So, personally, I think that this separation of concern should be adhered to. I try to. I know that CSS modules and style components get very popular for various reasons. I personally, as I said, I've never had a problem with this. Using BEM and using this entry point mindset has never ever failed me. And use, I, I use style components on a daily basis. I'm trying to move us away from that because another downside to doing something like style components is that as your product grows heavier especially when you're working in react the time it takes to recompile and you know running webpack and watchers and all that stuff it goes up because you you're adding more javascript to your stack just so that you can do styling and as i said the only real reason uh, the clear benefit here is either if you have a specificity problem if you need to be a hundred percent sure that you have unique selectors and powerful ones that don't get overridden or mutated by some vicious, like a hostile environment that you're putting your stuff into, or you have a need to keep things as simple as possible because maybe your developers are better, like more leaning towards the back end, or maybe they're not so you know versed with CSS. So what I want you to take away from this is that me personally, I think that style sheets is the way to go. I personally think that using something like BEM together with isolating, like having one file per component and then combining it all into an entry point which you compile and spit out, is, that's my favorite way of working. It's, 
it there's I've never seen it fail and the benefits are pretty big in comparison and style components is a very useful thing but I put them in the same bucket as using something like uh, yeah, bootstrap it's something that you use because you have a either a knowledge limitation a time limitation or a scalability limitation there's some reason as to why you don't want to use style sheets but I personally believe that style sheets should be the default have a great day